As much as I'm mathematically challenged, I do find something that genuinely interests me in the math world every once in a while. Today I'm going to be talking about functions, statistics, and trigonometry, specifically the Fibonacci number and the sequence. Fibonacci numbers. More than one of them. If you've ever heard about the Fibonacci sequence, then you probably know it's a very different series of numbers that occurs not only in the exciting minds of mathematicians, but outside in flowers or pine cones and in nature. It's a reoccurring pattern that people have been studying for years and years and still uncover new stuff about, mainly because you can. And it appears all the time. Mathematicians in India first introduced the number about 1300 years ago. However, it was largely accepted when an Italian guy named Leo of Pisa, or Leonardo Fibonacci, threw it on the table to the western part of the world. Like I said though, before him, there were plenty of other mathematicians uncovering certain aspects of the sequence as early as 200 BC. Leo, though, published a complete series of thoughts regarding the sequence in a book that he wrote called Liber Abici. In his book, he kind of came up with this concept with rabbits where he put pairs together and over the course of a year or so, they would reproduce with each other pretty casually. And so I guess he thought, hey, if I stick two rabbits together, that's one pair. And so then they'll make a new pair, and then that's two pairs, and then the original female will go on to make a third pair, and then and then, and then and so on. Eventually these rabbits went on to make another pair, so that was five pairs in Fibonacci's mind, and this, that's how the rabbit experiment worked. When you think about it critically and using common sense of rabbits, it doesn't make much sense because, you know, rabbits produce more than one offspring and more pairs and biology. Not to mention that it's incest, and uh, not that the rabbits care. Anyways, the numbers that turned out in the sequence were 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, 55, 89, 144, 233, and 377, 610, so on. And that was dubbed as what is today known as Fibonacci sequence. You can determine the next number in the series by adding the previous two together. If you're interested about the rule that goes along with this, it's xn equals xn minus 1 plus xn minus 2. In official mathematical speak, it's just the next term equals the last term plus the one after it. When you think about it, it's almost like solving a row of Pascal's triangle. And oddly enough, Fibonacci numbers are used to make up what they call the shadow diagonals in the triangle itself. The shadow diagonals use numbers that are already diverged from the previous ones as well. Besides the triangle that we all know and love, you can also use the sequence to form a series of squares. If you use the numbers from the Fibonacci sequence as width or length, such as, you know, 1 by 1, or 2 by 2, or 8 by 8, or 610 by 610, and if you take all these squares together, they form a really nice rectangle. The best part of the rectangle is, is that if you draw an arc from the angles in each one of the individual boxes, you get a really nice spiral that goes all the way around. But here is where things get interesting. In nature, the pattern in the sequence is commonly found in flower petals, uh, fruit, shells, um, like a nautilus's or a snail's, or uh, leaves, especially leaves. The same mathematical sequence that was outlined by Fibonacci so many years ago is pretty much found everywhere. By this I mean when you're taking a look at a plant or something, the number of leaves or petals it has in a pattern has a direct correlation with the sequence. When I'm slicing fruit and I take a look at the two halves that I just cut, the sections that it's broken up into, or the seeds that it has, can be found as an equal number in Fibonacci's pattern. Actually, the number of seeds it has is typically an indicator of why things work the way it does. Alright, so here's some complicated science. A plant contains a growth hormone that tells bits of it to grow. But as the plant is growing over time, more of this hormone that was found from the stem is getting farther and farther away. Because the hormone is spacing itself out, the plant tends to grow outward in these free regions. And as the plant keeps growing and growing and stretching outward, like with the leaves and things, it's ultimately forming this spiral. The spiral is, was defined by Fibonacci. So basically the plant is looking for new bits to grow where the leaf from the bit can thrive. Oh, and something else that's pretty interesting is that most of the leaves that grow on the plants themselves have a 137.5 degree angle from one another between them. This is called the golden angle. But the key behind it is understanding the golden ratio. And the golden angle was diverged from this. Honestly, I have no idea why everything's golden. I guess it's a Greek thing. Now the golden ratio is a number that's equivalent to 1.618. And it was found a long, long time ago 
uh, specifically with the Greeks. And they used in art and architecture, but it was also found in geometry and nature. It's represented by the letter phi, and it's an irrational number just like pi. And I am rhyming. If you divide some of the larger numbers in the Fibonacci sequence by one another, like uh, 377 or 610, um, you'll get a number that's pretty darn close to 1.618. Plants use the golden ratio because it's really efficient and it practically doesn't have any gaps when you're forming new seeds or creating spirals in the shape itself. For example, if you look at the top of a sunflower or something, there's practically no room between those bits that are formed on the top of it. Also, there's spirals basically everywhere. That's what the golden ratio is all based upon, is spirals. You can do this with a majority of plant life or fruit or vegetables like cauliflower, cauliflower florets, and anything. It's really crazy. So that was basically just a really complicated way of explaining how cool the Fibonacci sequence can be. But like when you're slicing open an apple or looking at flowers outside and the spirals, um, it's what's in the detail that's pretty crazy and amazing. The Fibonacci sequence isn't just a generic set of numbers, it's an outline of patterns found everywhere. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. Now you can go watch the Da Vinci Code and I've already unscrambled one of the keys for you. <laughs> oh god, that's irrelevant. Movie's old. Now you can go look at some fruit and flowers and enjoy yourself knowing the secret behind them. Thank you very much. I'll see you later. Henry knows he ought to have some vegetables, good diet and all that, you know. What's this? Henry's never seen anything like this before. Looks good, so he'll take two.